Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Leicester City Women's Wrap-Up Show. Another day, another episode, another special episode. But before you get into it, James, how are you today? Yeah, not too bad. It's a bit colder today in Leicester, but obviously not as cold as Canada, so <laughs> I can't complain, can I? Cold is cold, I'll allow it. <laughs> We've got a super special guest. Sam Tierney is joining us. The crucial goal scorer, Spider-Man herself. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. It's a pleasure. And how was your holiday? Um, my holiday. Did you do anything over the holidays? Do you know, in Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the first language barrier straight away. Look, I was like, what's a holiday? <laughs> I, I went to Santorini lot long ago. I think maybe that's it. Um, to be honest with you, it was really quiet. Um, just spent time with family. Obviously, COVID's still a massive thing. Um, I sort of got that over the festive period as well. So, um, didn't really get much time to celebrate. But I think the most important thing for me was celebrating was us just getting that victory against Birmingham because it allowed us to kind of go away and, and actually enjoy time with family rather than have things to stress about. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, just had time to catch up with family, um, seen a few like extended friends and stuff that I hadn't really seen for a while um, and tried not to eat too much, really. <laughs> I think over Christmas is like the most acceptable time to eat, like as much as possible. Like <laughs> just go all yeah. out. But obviously, you think so. Time, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. that one time where we're gonna allow it for sure. Um, yeah, until you have to get back and run, and then yeah, I mean, you like regret it. Have to, but <laughs> no, I don't it's think. a different case. It's your profession, whereas mine just requires for me to sit. So. <laughs> No, that's to be fair. I hope you had a good time eating all your your chocolates and that. I've still tried to store mine away in a locked box so I don't touch it right now. <laughs> I'm too guilty. It's like my midnight snack now is just chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously the win against Birmingham was huge. You know, your guys' first ever WSL win, and you were hugely involved in that. But I just want to like kind of go back in time a bit because you like to score in these games where it's like so like crucial you know you scored against Birmingham and you scored twice against Durham to help secure promotion like what what is it with you you have like this this nick for going for these goals which is amazing yeah um to be honest with you it's really weird because obviously the Durham game was best game of my life like everything that in my career like everything that that game meant um to us um was just a fantastic time and then off the back of that um Shannon then started calling me a big game player um only scores in big games and then I started thinking now oh, she's just she's just taking a mick here this isn't a thing because truth be told when I was a bit younger I was like I was a striker but that was years ago and then I've just gone down the pitch really so um I hadn't really scored much in my senior career which is a bit of a shame but yeah, apparently now I am continuing this run as this big game scorer. So um, I hope for that to continue, obviously. Um, but I don't know how much um, say I had in that. I think maybe I'm just a little bit lucky or someone's there helping me. But um, like I said, like the main thing was to to get the win. And then for me, the, the celebration was just um, a bit of a joke with the girls, really. <laughs> The celebrations were amazing, though, because it's almost like you don't expect yourself to score. So you just threw two celebrations into one, which made yeah. it even better. Well, the um, the sort of the backstory to, to that is um, we've got a little group of us in the squad. So there's me, Shannon, Molly, um, Gemma and Ez. And um, me and Shannon were going mad about Spider-Man for like weeks. We were we'd both saying we booked our tickets like we couldn't wait to watch it. And then um, we watched it and it was, I don't know if you've seen it, by the way, but it's a great film. Um, I'd definitely watch it. I think Shannon's watched it twice now. So, Um, and then we sort of, we were joking about that. And then they also, the second thing was, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but Jesse Nelson, you know, from Little Mix. There's this thing going around on TikTok of this performance she did at Jingle Bell Ball. Um, and loads of people were taking the mick out of it. And, and we kept doing it in the training ground. We just kept shouting, like, jingle bell ball. And then we, like, do the dance. Um, and then everyone was going, do you know what, Sam? Like, if you score, you have to do these celebrations. And I went, yeah, of course I will, because I didn't think I was going to score. 
because it's just not really me. <laughs> so I had agreed to it. And then I, I actually scored and I went, do you know what? I'm that surprised I've scored and I'm that excited that I'm going to do it. And then, well, the rest is history, really, because <laughs> everyone went mad. <laughs> It, it was an amazing win and I think I've been to a lot of games this season um, it's been coming Sam although we weren't winning um, every game was not an appalling performance we could see that it was getting there and getting there and against Birmingham it all seemed to come together um, and that header was just unbelievable I didn't see it coming yeah well no it's a it's it's good for us to hear that obviously everyone else can sort of see what we're seeing as well. And that's kind of what we hope is that um, people can see the performances and the, the work we've been putting in. Um, I think, like you said, we'd, we'd come close as well, like the Brighton game, the Everton game. So we knew we were only inches away, but at the same time, like we knew this league was going to be difficult and you have to keep learning as you go. So we just, like I said, we needed that points on the board before Christmas to to kick on. And now, well, we've got a very important month ahead of us, really. Yeah. And during the bad times, how how was it keeping morale together in the squad? Because it must be difficult when you're not winning every week and you're losing to goals that are probably late on and, and probably goals you shouldn't be conceding and you get downhearted a bit, don't you? So how do you keep that morale together? Because every game you seem to come out fighting as a team again. Yeah, definitely. I think um, we've got some really good girls in the group. Like, um, first of all, we've got girls who have got experience of these situations as well. That helps massively just to reassure us that, you know, we are a good team. We have got the talent and, you know, we can be in this league. And I think more so, like like I said, the, the girls that we've got, we kind of keep each other going. Like I said, things like the celebration, like we're always laughing and joking and I think for us, because we could see we were getting better, we knew we weren't far off. Um, but yeah, the the hardest thing for us really, like, you know, like the season before is we had like eight new players come in and, you know, it might seem easy, but it's really not. Like you're still learning about each other. We're still learning about each other now. Um, I think obviously a few people are aware that obviously we do some, quite a few socials every week and stuff as a team and with the staff and, it's just really trying to stay together as a group and and I think if you can do that, then the rest kind of follows suit, really. Mm -hmm. We can definitely tell, like, even just from, like, a supporter's perspective that you guys definitely have, like, a bond and, like, this whole, like, community built within the squad. And you guys put out some good content. I've seen the TikToks. <laughs> some good stuff. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the TikToks, to be fair, like, sometimes if we get a little break in the day, we're just fill in time I think me and I don't know if you've seen it me and Molly did a little dance one as well um and then Ez Ez joined in but Ez isn't the most um coordinated should we say so that's I saw a the while. um I think Molly uploaded like a Cotton Eye Joe one that you guys yeah, did and that's, that's hilarious to me because that exact dance is what we're taught here in schools because like, no I live in like Cowboy Central so they teach us how to line dance and everything and as soon as I saw oh that God. I flashbacks like gym class. <laughs> I bet you was judging us I promise you it no. was Ez that was holding us back Ez was holding <laughs> us back I'm telling you <laughs> I mean it looked pretty together I'll give you guys that <laughs> yeah you want to see the the retakes before that <laughs> absolutely I mean yeah. I saw like the whole jerk thing that Kirsty uploaded and yeah. there's definitely some questionable <laughs> yeah but on a on a serious note though like it's good for us to mm -hmm. um try and stay connected to you guys as fans because you know we we have acknowledged and hope that you guys know that um you guys are really important to us and the journey that we're on and where we want to go um like the fans and everything you guys are doing for us is is massive so um it's definitely in terms of the clubs I've been at you know the best sort of um fan base and you know promotion that we've had so we appreciate that that's awesome. I'm glad that you guys see everything that the fans are doing because I know that we do it for you guys and to hear that you guys are also doing it for us. Like, I know a lot of clubs, they just kind of, they say like, oh, thanks to the fans and that's as good as it gets. So it's like really nice to know. It's like really refreshing to know that you guys kind of see us that way as well. So thank you. No worries. <laughs> I don't know how to take compliments. So, <laughs> but No, honestly, I'm the worst for it. But yeah, you, you guys deserve it. And 
we've got some good people like you know ash ash is one of the most honest you know you spoke to her um she really appreciates everything and yeah you guys know it i'm sure so yeah ash just tells us that a lot <laughs> yeah i know celebrations well they again you see that so <laughs> um you're obviously together uh sam one question we've asked a lot of the players which seems to cause a lot of debate who is the tech ball champion all oh, right um <laughs> We have a truth be told, we haven't really played this in ages. Um, but Ez used to fancy herself, Ez is quite good at it. Um, but yeah, we haven't played in a while. But do you know what, though? Because we're doing these socials, um, we might bring it back in and then we might try and like actually decide a champion officially. And it'll go one or two ways. It'll go really well or we'll all fall out. So if we fall out, that is then officially on you as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, have no. against us. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I mean, who's everyone else said? I think when we had Shannon on, she said it was her. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I think Molly said it was Shannon as well. Really? Ash said Esme is a dark horse. Yeah, Ez is good. Do you know what Ez is good at though? She like um she reads it really well. So she's one of them that jumps on the table and like finishes <laughs> wow. it dead quick. I'm I just watch. I'm I'm terrible. I'm so nowhere near the top. It. Yeah, she's good. She's good. <laughs> and Ash said that her legs were too long. Yeah, it's just not a game for Ash, really. Um, <laughs> but me and Ash acknowledge that. We know that and head tennis, it's not our thing. But mm -hmm. You know, Ash, Ash's performances this year on the pitch beat for herself in that department. So that's all I asked for anyway. <laughs> How can you, you not be good at head tennis head. the way you head a ball? Oh, do you know what it is? It's just, it's these little games and that. Like, I'm just a traditional player, like, do everything you need to do, get your run on it, finish it, tackle it, get back. I ain't got nothing special. Like, I'm not, I ain't got these feet like Charlie and all them. <laughs> I'm just me. <laughs> but you're big game Sam from now on, apparently. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, Shannon keeps telling me, so I'm going to hold on to that for a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, you can't say you don't do much when you're out there scoring against Durham and Birmingham. So you, know, you, might, you might put one in against Reading too. You I might just end so. up scoring every game for the rest of the season if we keep this up. Yeah, I do. I do hope so. That's that's my plan now. <laughs> and, and unless anyone marks me now. That's probably what's going <laughs> We've kind of seen a bit of a shift, like position wise, from you. It looks like, like last season, you were more in of a defensive role. And this season, we're kind of seeing you in more of like that midfield position, kind of switching between both. How has it been kind of just, you know, kind of transitioning from one to the other? Or you're still just kind of doing both? And yeah. Um, so for me, like, obviously, I don't know how many, many people know this, but throughout my whole career, I've switch between both so mm -hmm. um for my youth career i was more of a center mid and then my senior career i started especially through the england youth teams going as center half and then the ironic thing is when you can do both you often get used in both um you know obviously we've we've struggled with some injuries and especially with covid as well at times like um just rotating the team but i've always found it's a it's a good thing for me because obviously like if I can play in different positions and at the end of the day for me if I'm giving everything to the team that's all that bothers me um mm -hmm. but to be honest with you I've actually really enjoyed playing in the midfield this year um especially with Molly like me and Molly get on really well off the pitch and I think that helps us on the pitch as well um but then also just how we've been playing it's allowed me to get on the ball a bit more being involved in the game in terms of like in the middle, like, you, you know, it's them pressure situations, you're, you're receiving in tight areas, you're creating attacking opportunities. Um, but again, in the same breath, obviously, I started the Birmingham game at centre half and there's probably more times that I'll, I might play there as well. So um, it's just a different thing at centre half. It's a bit more chilled playing with Ash and Abs. But obviously, last year I played with Ash the whole season and yeah, Ash is my favourite and I really, really play well with her. So, um, it's been good and like I said, as long as I'm doing everything for the team, that's that's all that bothers me really. I think that's really good. And just rewinding to last season a little bit, 
um, the day you got given your medal, we've asked a lot of players this, what did you do with your medal that, that night? We've had players sleeping with medals and <laughs> putting them under pillows. And... Um, yeah, well, um, so what I did with mine, first of all, I didn't take it out anywhere with me in terms of, I think when we obviously went on a night out, celebrate, like a few people might have took it, but I, that's not me. Um, don't want to lose that, scratch it or anything. I'm really, um, I take pride in that. Um, but to be honest, one of the first things I did over then put it in a safe place was message. Um, I have a framer, a guy that I always go to. I messaged him. I had a design thought in my head for ages. Um, and then I messaged him and he did me a really big frame. So like one side I've got the um, blue shirt. So I've got the front of it because it has the little gold writing under that says champions. Yeah. Um, the other side, it's got um, the back of my white shirt, so it says my name. And then in the middle, it has um, my medal with a little plaque and a picture, I think. So I'll send you a picture of it if you want to see it. But um, yeah, it's massive thing. and it's going to have to go somewhere in my new house now. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, obviously showed my parents and that because that was the difficult thing about last year is they couldn't be there. Um, when I was at Donny Bell's, when we won the... Well, it was classed as the Super League two at that time, but when we won that, um, obviously my parents were there, which was which was good. But last year we, it was just us lot, but um, it was not too bad, was it, on the King Power? So yeah, it was good times. <laughs> and what's it been like playing there this season? Because obviously, first game with fans there, it must have been unbelievable stepping out on the King Power to see fans there. I think first game we were there, there was about four and a half thousand fans. Yeah, it's actually um, it's actually incredible to be honest with you because you don't quite realise how loud it actually is with them fans on. So I think the first game, like you said, when there was like four and a half thousand fans, I was thinking I normally hear at the time. Obviously, it was Jonathan. I was like, I normally hear Jonathan, but I can't hear him, and we didn't quite realise like obviously how that would then affect because we couldn't quite hear the messages. So we had to kind of change that a little bit. But it was just it was so nice to see, and it kind of gives you. Like, well, definitely for me, but it kind of, you know, makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up because you think this is really one where women's football hopefully should be going and more and more fans and things like that. But, you know, to represent Leicester, which is for me a team that's given me a lot of great opportunities and to sort of give back to the fans because, you know, we had such a great year last year that you followed from afar, but to now start of share our you know, personalities and performances with you guys has is, is been incredible, really. Yeah, and that first game, there were so many people with Tierney on the back of their shirts. That must be a proud <laughs> moment as well. Well, um, it was funny, actually, because um, I went into the club shop um, a few weeks before and um, they'd had our, they've got all our shirts in there now with the names. And um, I went to just get, I think I was getting a present for somebody. And I went to the the counter and on the back of the counter they had like my shirt as an example of like the lettering yeah. and I kind of just stood there and I thought no nah, this is this is mad this is good but it's um it's just great that we can inspire so many people now and you know I've got one girl that I've I do a bit of coaching on the side and I've been coaching her and she now follows all my games and things and to show that you know what we do they can do and I think last game, someone was holding up a sign. Little girl was holding up a sign for Molly Pike's shirt as well. So I kind of saw that one as well. But it's just refreshing to see that we can have that connection with the fans. And obviously, Hannah, hopefully you can be at the King Power one day and maybe hold up a little sign and we'll see you shit. We can get you as well. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to bring a sign. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, honestly, I hope, obviously, you get to come down at some point because it would be a great, a great honour for us to be able to see that you there after everything you're doing for us at Leicester. Thank you. I'm hoping to. Obviously, COVID's making it a bit tough, but yeah. that's definitely like top of my bucket list now. Is And as soon as I'm there, I'm going to be going to like away games as well, because apparently the yeah. UK is very small, so it's easy to get around. So <laughs> It is. It is very small. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it easy to travel to every single game. It's funny because James will be like, oh, Joe and I are driving like two hours to the away game. I'm like, two hours? <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah. You uh, make me sound guilty now because I am the exact same. So like, I'm thinking about this Reading game. I'm like, I'm going to have to take my pillow. And it literally is like two hours. <laughs> it's nothing. But yeah, compared to what you have to do. 
That's okay. I think every single person I've spoken to from there, like I remember there was one day when I went to the Canada game here, it's a three hour drive one way, which is like nothing. And I remember people being like, oh, that's that's so far. Why, why would you do that? <laughs> like, it's not bad. And I'm hoping to go to Vancouver when our women's team play out there. And that's a 12 hour drive. And for me, that's not bad. So <laughs> it's just well, shows a huge difference. But yeah, rather you than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be driving when I'm there, though, because I can't do the whole other side of the road thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, nah, not me. Not me. I'll be taking out every car on the road before I make it to any of your guys' grounds. So, <laughs> but yeah, hopefully I can make it out there one day. And when I'm out there, it's definitely going to be, I'm going all out. So it'll be a good one. Good. Can't wait. <laughs> so um, obviously you mentioned Reading coming up on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. I can't even remember what day it is today. So on Sunday. <laughs> Um, how are you guys feeling going into that one? Because that's another one where I know people are kind of watching and thinking like, this is another opportunity for points. You're kind of bouncing off of Birmingham. How's that one feeling? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think obviously we're we're on a bit of a high, as I said, through the Birmingham result. Um, and again, like you said, we've we've got games now coming up that we know if we put the performances in, in that we have been doing and what we've been working on that we can pick points up from them. I think that is the important thing is picking points up, you know, like obviously we want to win games, but again, it's a journey. And if we just pick points up here and there and it's going to help us, but in the same breath, you know, Reading aren't a team that we can take lightly. And that's something we've, we've, you know, established and we've looked at, I think, I think they started off the season with four losses, but since then, like they've been on a really good run, um, some impressive performances as well. And they've obviously got quite a, you know, we talk about our team cohesion, but they look like they've got a really good togetherness and understanding. So we know it's going to be, I mean, every game is in the Super League, but it's going to be a difficult one. It's going to be physical. But again, as I say, you know, we go there and we've got nothing to lose now. And that's kind of how we're looking at the games and hopefully get more confidence and keep pushing on now. Mm -hmm, absolutely and I think a lot of us have been looking at the WSL and just kind of seeing like this season has been so surprising like for Brighton to be in the top four I don't think anyone saw that one coming for City to be sitting as low as they are and like you said Reading having that poor start to be kind of picking things up it's I think every club is just kind of surprising everywhere and I know that you guys showed up against Chelsea and I don't think anyone saw that one coming either with you guys being the newcomers so I, I know for a fact that you guys are definitely going to continue like showing up and it's just, it's so entertaining to watch and it's just up from here. So yeah. it's going to be really interesting to see how like the season turns out at the end because it's so yeah. unpredictable. Yeah, I think obviously when we looked at it at the start, you know, we would, like I said, wouldn't have expected off things that have gone off. But I think it just shows as well, like, especially what we've learned is the quality in the league and you know, even though at times if things aren't going wrong, like there's some fantastic players and fantastic teams in there. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one and hopefully we'll we'll see a few more changes in the league and we start moving up a little bit. But, um, yeah, our Chelsea performance, that was, I think when we talk about, you know, the morale, that was probably a turning point for us um, where we knew actually, do you know what, like that's one of the best teams in the world and we've, you know, gone and put in a performance like that. And I think we came off it more disheartened in terms of the fact that we think we actually, you know, we deserved points for the game. So when you go into that game against Chelsea, like I said, you, you don't really expect that. So uh, I think that's kind of a performance we, we look back on fondly and, you know, we kind of bring ourselves back to, to keep pushing on. And I think as a fan, as I said earlier, not one point this season ever started to panic. Like, oh, what are we going to do? Are we going to get relegated mid-table? But I've never been panicky this season. Um, and I think that's because of the performances I've been seeing and not been poor performances. Um, I think at times I've just been unlucky performances. Um, yeah. But we saw it come in in Birmingham, it came up. Um, and I think Reading, it'll just go from strength to strength. Fingers crossed. <laughs> And if it happens from you on Sunday, we're we're definitely expecting a celebration. Okay, yeah. Um, You're the new now. celebration queen. When I spoke to Paige recently um, for the article I did about her Jamaica debut, I mentioned how she had like some of the best celebrations. 
And she was like, yeah, like none of the girls celebrate. Like they're boring <laughs> with their celebrations. And now you well, showed up. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm giving her a run for her money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're going to kind of transition into some, just some fun questions. We talked about football enough, I guess. Um, just kind of switch things over and ask a couple stuff like about your teammates, about things that you do in your spare time, just stuff we typically ask. But when I spoke to Charlie on the show last season, I asked her this question and I guess it was one of the favorites from the viewers. So if you were stranded on an island and you could only bring one teammate, who would you want to be stuck with? Like who would be the most useful in that situation? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> who would be the most useful? Well, as I say, I've got like my group, but I don't think any of them would be useful, <laughs> to be honest. When I talk about use in terms of what I'd need, I don't think that's appropriate. They'd probably do my nothing. So um, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I don't think, I don't know who Charlie said, but I'll ask you that in a second, but I would have to say Ash because I just, I just love Ash. Like she's just incredible like as a person because I can just laugh with her about random stuff, but I can also have like really serious conversations about like important topics in life and that mm -hmm. really mature. So you have that balance, but also like, I think, um, I think she'd just be like really intelligent with things like she'd know what to do. Like I'm, I wouldn't say like I'm majorly intelligent. I'm all right, but she's intelligent. So I would bring a bit of common sense and she could just bring the intelligence. And I think we could be all right. And she like her, her dancing and stuff like that would just keep me entertained. So, so I'd say Rue, she's my Rue. That's what I call her. <laughs> I was going to ask about that because every single time I speak with Ash, we bring up drag race. So yeah. is that something that you guys also talk about? Yeah, so I literally don't call Ash by her name anymore. Like I call her Rue. Um, and I and I have done ever since last year with the, the drag race thing and all her dancing. And I literally every time I see her, I just go Rue. And then she go and then she calls me Rue as well, but we just we just know each other by Rue. But yeah, she's she's a great obviously when we're in the gym and the music's on. If a few of her tunes are on, she's she's always dancing. So she's a fantastic person to have around. That's awesome. I love it. You're gonna have to get her like a bald cap one day so that she can like pull off the full out Rue look. Well, I've I've said this to her. I've said like I want to see her go like I want to see her go all out and try it. But I don't know if she's gonna do it yet. We'll we'll keep working on that one. <laughs> definitely should. That's definitely something worth uh, trying. Um, Charlie's answer last season was Amy. She wanted to bring Amy on the island. Really? She what said was so that what was the reason. She said so that Amy would make her feel smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so she didn't really have lasted a day then, behind so. that, but I allowed it. So Yeah. They wouldn't last past the day, let me tell you that. <laughs> they wouldn't last. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I think that answers that question. <laughs> about well, who would done. who would you who would you guys want to take? Off of your team? If you could take a, yeah, if you could take a player. Obviously, <laughs> you might not know them as much, but if, let's say if you wanted to get to know them more, who would you, who would you want to get to know more? Don't don't say me because I'm here. It's fine. I was about <laughs> to say well, you're here, so <laughs> that's tough. Are, but are we talking like survival mechanisms? Like who do you think we would survive most with, or like just someone that we like genuinely just want to like get to know? Um, maybe just someone you'd want to get to know. Ooh. You all seem so nice. And that's not just me saying that because you're on the show. Like, you guys are yeah. genuinely all so nice. Um, got to be one that you're like. I reckon she's got something funny about her or something. <laughs> 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 or she's got a funny trick or something. Ooh, I'm trying to think of all the players in my head right now. I think for survival reasons, I'd take Ash because I think she'd be very optimistic every day <laughs> yeah um that's a very happy person. i think it would probably get to know is probably kirsty <laughs> she she'd funny. drive you mental <laughs> <laughs> i knew she someone was coming would. when you let that laugh out <laughs> yeah she's funny she's very funny but she'd just go crazy <laughs> <laughs> i can tell you that she's taking that crazy. off my list <laughs> yeah Good shot, I, though. I, like that. I don't know. 
My first thought was probably Sophie Barker. Okay. Just because she kind of seems like she'd have like that like leadership to kind of help me. Like if I were to lose my mind, she'd kind of, <laughs> you know, like slap well, some we'll sense see. into me. We'll um, see. But like I get to know. Oh my goodness. I don't know why I'm blanking so much right now. <laughs> I feel like we've spoken to so many of you guys already. So I'm like, who have I not? spoken to yet that i want to get to know this answer is taking way too long i'm so sorry um, you spoke to Sh- you spoke to shannon aren't you yeah yeah you spoke to ez as well no so that's ez. who i was gonna say ez yeah ez would be a funny one yeah, um, that's what i was thinking there just might be a bit of a language barrier every now and then she goes a bit foreign <laughs> so do, so she's obviously from the netherlands is that like do you guys ever kind of struggle with that on the pitch or no Nah, she's she's no. been in England like for a few years now. Like she speaks like England English fluent, fluent. Like she's fine with that. But sometimes mm-hmm. her accent and like sometimes, you know, the way like they'll say sentences sometimes is just a bit jumbled up. And to be quite honest, we just we do just take the mick out of her, <laughs> and then she pulls the foreign card out. So can't really say anything else. <laughs> <It's> the defense <laughs> mechanism. Yeah, but yeah, good answers. And now you've got Zajmi in the squad as well. And is that like another kind of language barrier as well, like with an accent or anything like that? Or it's another situation of not, it's okay. Yeah, pretty similar, just accents really. But to be fair to them, like I take my hat off to them. Like they do really well with with English and and settling in terms of obviously in a different country because I'd be a bit lost for probably 10 years, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So fair play to them. But yeah, we normally just make a few foreign jokes and carry on. <laughs> so if you could become fluent in any language by tomorrow, what language would you want to speak? Um, I've always wanted to learn Spanish, to be fair. I know it sounds very boring and very <laughs> mainstream, but I just seem to go on holiday at a lot of Spanish places. And I mm-hmm. think it sounds just really cool how they speak. So I, um, when I finished uni, I tried to learn it on that... Um, duolingo app and then i was getting bored of just learning about how to say apple and stuff so i've kind of knocked it on the head for the minute but i will come back to it i'm sure <laughs> that's great and one question we always ask everyone uh, sam what's your guilty pleasure for binge watching things what's your go-to uh, se- season or series i don't know if i'm allowed to say it but um you know do, i mean have you seen undateables Yes, I have. Yeah. Oh, Hannah's not seen it. So I like <laughs> watching Undateables. Obviously, Hannah, if you get to watch it, watch it. Um, I'm mad for Benidorm. Love Benidorm. Watched all of Benidorm about 500 times. Um, and then it's a bit more older, but I used to watch a lot of, I mean, James is probably more you, but Max and Paddy. Yes. Yeah. Very funny, probably not appropriate for this generation, but <laughs> very old banter. That's yeah. But Benny Dorm, yeah, probably my go to. But Hannah, I, I can think... you not get Benny Dorm on Netflix? I've never heard of that. Oh, no. It's on the UK Netflix. So I don't know if you could see it. Probably not. Yeah, see, this is the struggles. I don't have I Canadian know. Netflix. It just gives me another reason <laughs> to get out there sooner. Exactly. But I, I was exposed to UK television when Ash came on the first time. She told me to watch Gogglebox. <laughs> so I watched that. <laughs> I was confused, but... <laughs> to be honest, I can imagine Ash on Gogglebox. Um, that would be great. It would actually be quite funny if we had a few of us on Gogglebox. Maybe we could try and make that happen next series. <laughs> you should just like do that on your guys' like, own... Yeah, just make your own yeah. series with it. Yeah, I'm going to try it, I think. Started something there, aren't we? there you go perfect i remember ash did that car show didn't she oh gosh yeah <laughs> or was it her it was it the top gear or something her yeah. and chloe was it it's holly yeah. holly, holly yeah. was it if that um, was just sam if you had to do that who would you take in the car with you because <laughs> <laughs> they were quite funny together um in terms of taking someone funny um it would probably be like either me and Molly because we're just stupid together or me and Ez because like I said, Ez is just funny because 
she's just ditzy. Like, I think she's very ditzy. Um, and I think if it was something like that, it'd be funny because she just, like, she'd get confused about what's going on. And obviously, I think they drive on the other side of the road, don't they? And when I get in the car with her, I get a bit nervous because she has this little car. It's like a um, little Peugeot. I think it's like a 208, you know, the real small ones. Yeah. And she just, like, she just when she's driving, it's like she doesn't think what she's doing. She's just driving. <laughs> and I'm all, I'm always a bit on edge, so... I think it'd be quite funny with Vez, actually. Be interesting. Maybe you guys can win. I don't know if it's a show that you win, but <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> her not paying attention or anything could just lead you guys to a win, I guess. Hopefully. And then Vez could do a celebration dance. <laughs> God, I'll be there for ages. <laughs> <laughs> you seem like you're you're fairly close with Esme, so I'm curious as to what your reaction was when she scored that goal against um, London Bees last season, because <laughs> that was ridiculous. Um, yeah, um, I think that was the reaction. Shock when she did it. Um, I, I remember it like very vividly as she did it. I thought, don't know why she's doing that. I don't know why she's trying that. I don't even know what she's trying. And then she did it and everyone just went mental. And then I remember that game because I think the first half, we just couldn't score like for our lives. To be fair to them, they defended really well, but we had chance after chance. I was getting really annoyed. I was thinking, this, I don't even know what's going to happen here. And then obviously the goals kept coming in and then Ez's goal went in and everyone went mental and she did a, a celebration. <laughs> she was like this or something, I'm thinking. The Mbappe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, and I think that was another like inside joke with the girls at the time. But yeah, we always kind of say it to her, like, when are you going to pop up with another one of them? But maybe she's saving it for another special game. <laughs> I think the funny thing about that was when we were watching, like it went in, we saw all of you guys just like kind of freeze and then turn and look at her. And then it was like it processed that she had just yeah. scored. So, and she pointed to her shoe too. So I don't know what that, that was about, but. Um, I can't remember what that was about. It, it might've been something to do with her boots or, um, no, nah, I'll, I'll try and find out. I can't remember, but I think, like I said, everyone was just shocked and, we looked and thought, is that even, was that Ez or was that somebody else on the bench or something hitting <laughs> it from there? <laughs> that was an awesome moment. Yeah. So we got to ask for you to add uh, to our playlist. We kind of discussed, discussed it a little bit beforehand, but what's your chosen song? I think you're the only one that came like with the song ready. Everyone else kind of had to sit and think, but you were like prepared. It's obviously not their favorite song then, is it? That's the point, but. <laughs> Um, no, I'm joking. Um, so mine is Peter Andre, Mysterious Girl. Um, it's an absolute party classic, I think. Um, and then hopefully one day, if we're celebrating, we might see it. <laughs> you have to now. You've put it yeah. out on the show. You have to. We we'll so might wait for another day. big game. <laughs> I think that one day will be Sunday. Oof. You might have put the lucky touch on it. To be honest, if it means that we get points, I'll do I'll do anything. <laughs> We've manifested it on the show here, so good. Good. I'm here for that. <laughs> Last time we did this we had Hannah Hannah on, didn't we? And um she agreed to do the worm after she scored and she scored and didn't do the worm, so <laughs> Well, I can't do that, let me tell you that. That's <laughs> I said I'd do anything, but I can't do the worm. So I'll try the, the Peter Andre for you. <laughs> That, we'll take it. We'll take it. The worm seems a bit dangerous. <laughs> so yeah. I think we scare every player that we bring that up to because I think they think we're expecting them to be like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> there will be some crazy ones in there that will genuinely do it. I think Molly can do the worm, but I'll try. I'll try and tell her to practice it in case she scores. <laughs> now we have to get her on the show so she can do the worm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Perfect. Well, well, live as well. <laughs> go live yeah <laughs> james is there anything you're wanting to throw in before we kind of wrap things up uh just around uh just wanted to days off so obviously typical days off sam what kind of things do you get up to do you just lounge around or i know when, i know ash was saying that she when she have days off she's here there and everywhere and it's not really a day off yeah no it's it's funny because it really is that like you know I think when we're training, you know, when we finish training, you have the evening, but you don't really want to do too much after that. Like, obviously, on a training day, we might go, like, a group of us go for coffee and stuff. But 
on our off days that's normally when because we only get like one or two in the week that's when you have to do all, all your little errands and stuff that you don't normally get a chance to do so like your toiletry shopping because we have a lot of toiletry thieves in the changing room so you buy a shower gel and the next week you need to buy another one um so a bit of that um things like stupid things like you need to get your hair done your I mean Shannon is constantly getting her eyelashes done and her eyebrows done so she has to plan that meticulously around the off days um and you'll see them especially on any Sky Sports game you'll see Shannon and her eyelashes <laughs> done um but me most recently um as I touched upon obviously I've just bought a house so my off days are now very busy buying stuff for the house and from the end of January when I move in probably putting up Ikea flat packs yeah, <laughs> which is gonna go good. it's gonna go very badly let me tell you that <laughs> I hate Ikea flat packs with passion it's stressful very stressful one thing I, I will say right. don't buy the complete set from Ikea like you yeah. don't realize there's two separate boxes so you leave thinking like oh I just had to steal the deal like I got this thing for half off and then you realize it's because you only have half of the pieces the thing, yeah <laughs> They know how to get you, they do. Just one to touch on with IKEA. Um, Hannah, I don't know what it's done it's like in Canada with IKEA, but here, the funniest thing about IKEA is when you come out of IKEA, you see people trying to trying to cram massive wardrobes <laughs> into these small four door cars. That is me. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. So la- last year, um, I think it was last year or a year before. I had the small car that Ez has now, little Peugeot. Luckily, I went into the back of someone and I got rid of that because it was too small. But um, we tried to fit, me and my other half tried to fit, um, I think it was a 55-inch TV in this car. (laughs) I do not know for the life of me how we did it, but we did. And I had to drive back because I had to sit, like, the closest to the steering wheel that you could sit. (laughs) So, like, I was on the clutch and, like, I kept, like, like stalling <laughs> and like we were hitting the windscreen because it was just that close but yeah ikea is terrible for it and i think that's definitely going to be me in a few weeks time when i pick my wardrobes up because my car now isn't much bigger it's a little bit bigger but it ain't it ain't massive so i might have to call on a few of the girls we might have to do a little bit of a an ikea run together <laughs> a little ikea haul <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you guys have food at ikea there uh the meatballs like you have, do you have like the restaurant? Yeah, yeah. Have you had the meatballs there? Do you have? No. Them? I don't know. Sometimes that's... I go to IKEA just for lunch. Yeah, that's it's so cheap. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, James, is there anything else or? No, I was I was just uh, thinking about toiletries going missing. So there must be someone in that training room who does not go shopping for toiletries every week. You need to find out who that is. The thing is. Currently, we are on a private investigation, a few of us, about some thieves in the team because Ash Ash also struggles with... So Ash has obviously got very long legs and she likes to bring her own Adidas socks in, you know, the white ones. And she always gets new ones for Christmas. So she's most recently got a new pack and she purposely got some like extra large ones because she doesn't like it. I'm telling you a lot about it. She, she won't mind. But she don't like it when, a, you know, a trackies, when there's a gap between the bottom of your trackies and your socks because mm-hmm. her legs are yeah. long. She's got some really long ones. And then she came in this week, actually, and they'd not, like, someone had took them from the washing. So Ash had no socks. So she had to borrow, like, I think it was Sophie Harris's socks, and they were only the smaller ones. So she had this massive gap. So actually, currently on the lookout for a team thief because... Like I said, with the toiletries, we'll go in the shower and like, I'm buying shampoo, shower gel, conditioner every week. And there's definitely someone going in <laughs> on the sly. So we will be back in touch about who that is because they deserve to be named and shamed for that, I think. <laughs> Somebody's got white Adidas socks that probably comes up to their kneecaps. Well, that's what <laughs> I mean. We're looking, we're looking under the table um, tomorrow, I think, to see who's got them on. <laughs> We're just going to post like a clip of this on all of our socials and then be like, <laughs> Kate, whoever it is. And then next week you're going to see that your stuff is suddenly like reappear. Well, hopefully it has and maybe this will help. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
well, we got to know now. We're, we're part of the investigation now, too. Yeah. We'll let you Whoever know. it is is going to be terrified now. <laughs> Either that and or they'll just come own up to YouTube it. And outed them like that. <laughs> yeah. Or they'll own up to it and then carry on doing it anyway. That's probably <laughs> what some of them will do. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. I know we've kind of stolen a whole bunch of your time. So thank you so much for sitting with us for this long. That's fine. Thank you for, for having me again, like I said. And obviously, hopefully see you all at our games and I'll carry on looking at all your content because you always give me a lot more information than I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> for your inside sources. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so, so much. Um, and best of luck on Sunday. We'll all be watching and we've got you guys as always. So good luck and fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we can see a celebration as well from you, but <laughs> if not on to the next one. <laughs> we know you'll score again later on this season, but we look forward to Sunday and wish you guys the best of luck. And thank you to everyone who has taken the time to watch us. Um, James doesn't have all our fancy little buttons up today, so I won't struggle with pointing. Um, <laughs> But yes, yeah, so if you haven't joined the Supporters Club, get on that. They have their own section of the King Power. So sit with them and create this crazy atmosphere. Have fun. Just do all the good stuff. Her Game 2 is a great campaign. Check out all of their socials to see what they're up to. Uh, Memphis is an amazing charity. And hopefully they have some stuff going on with us in the future. And check out all their stuff. And thank you so, so much again to everyone for watching. And thank you again to Sam. And we'll see you guys after Reading. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys. Thanks. <laughs>